Hey guys, welcome to week three of the vlog. I'm going to be doing my own uh, moulds this week. So using silicon to make a mould for casting the plaster sections of the city wall. I'm going to be doing my own ground covers and textures. And I'll be building and painting the canal section. So let's get to it. Time to go on with the mould making. So I've got things in place so I can show you what everything is. So this is the silicon rubber. So the majority of the bulk is this um, uncured rubber. Then we add the catalyst in a 10% mix. And once I pour it, it will then set, I think, overnight. Um, I've got a pot to mix everything up in, including some stirring sticks. I've got some gravel here, although you can use rice if you have any spare at the moment, um, to pour over the mould um, to gauge how much rubber I'm going to need. Because guessing this, uh, when this stuff is a little bit pricey, um, is not the best idea. I don't want to get it wrong. And I've got my hot glue gun here so that I can seal around the outside of the mould. So what I've done is I've glued the actual piece to cast down to this plastic board, um, which I'll be able to get off afterwards because this is the plastic protection on top of the EPVC. I made a frame out of Lego um, that is notably higher than the mould itself. Um, my casting guru friend Ian from White Shark Gaming has told me that I need to pour approximately a centimetre above the actual mould. Um, so this will make sure that I've got plenty of space for the mould to be... Uh, deep enough so that there's no problems of it flexing when I actually cast the pieces at the end. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go round the outside here with the glue gun to make sure this is held down so that the silicon doesn't seep underneath the Lego um, and it shouldn't get in between the bricks too much. You get a little tiny bit of seepage but it won't come out the other side and I'll have to leave it in place overnight. I've made sure that my work surface is nice and flat. I've used a spirit level to make sure that uh, the rubber's not going to run to one side. I've shimmed up under the legs. So we should be in a good spot to get a nice flat bottom to the mould so that when it's upside down and you're casting it, you get perfectly even thickness bricks. Right, so here I have the mould glued around the edges and nicely fixed in place and made sure everything was square. And I've filled it to a suitable depth uh, with the gravel. Um, when the glue is fully cooled down, I will tip the gravel into this container, which I plan to mix the silicon in, and I'll see how far up the container it comes. I will mark that with a Sharpie. I will then tip the gravel back into its pot and bag, and then when I put the silicone in, what I'll do is I'll fill it up to that line um, on a set of scales, and then I'll add the 10% catalyst, which will come up a little bit more, give myself a little bit of uh, extra flexibility. I will mix it all up and pour it in. It should come to the, about the same level. So this helps you gauge just how much silicon you need so that you can save um, going over the top and wasting any, and also making sure that you don't make the mould with too thin a bottom because that can be problematic for keeping the mould stable. And also you run the risk of tearing the bottom of the mould when you're using it if it's a little on the thin side. Right, so I tipped out all the gravel and I'm left with the fill line here, which is the minimum amount of uh, this silicon rubber that I'm going to put into the uh, mixing pot. I'm then going to make sure I weigh it accurately and then top up with 10% of this, I think. Yep, 10 to 1, so make sure you read the instructions very carefully because you get one shot at mixing this in. And then once that's thoroughly mixed, I will pour it onto the mould. I will do so from a starting height like this and get a thin stream going down the side of the mould. And I'll then lift, 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 lift really high up off camera. And it will cause a very thin stream that causes as many air bubbles as possible to pop. And it will fill up in here and go around and start to come over. And that way you get a really, really good coverage of the piece and it minimises the number of air bubbles that are in the mould. I'll also be vibrating the mould to try and, once I'm done to try and cause as many of the bubbles as possible to come to the surface so that you get the cleanest possible cast. And again, this is all following instructions that I've gotten from Ian at White Shark Gaming Studios. So let's get to it. Okay, so I've mixed up my silicon here. I've made sure, I mean, I added a few bubbles here, which, which will pop, but I've made sure to mix it until it's a really consistent color, um, including scraping this across the sides like this to make sure you get all of the white unmixed uh, silicon off the sides like this, and then mix it in with the green and try and do it nice and slowly. I've been doing this for about five minutes to make sure I get a consistent color and introduce as few bubbles as possible. I've checked underneath to make sure there's no white bits. 
Um, my casting consultant, Ian, has informed me this is good enough. So I'm going to pour it now and put it on a time lapse. So following the steps, I poured it from very, very, very high up once the stream started, at least three feet over the surface to make sure it's as thin as possible and get all of those bubbles out of the mix. Well, that is the pour complete. I vibrated it and some bubbles have come to the surface and popped, which is very good news, I understand. It's nice and level. I've pushed the bricks down to make sure there's no leakages at all. And obviously it's glued around the base. So now it's just a case of leaving it for uh, eight hours. So I will probably take the safe option and leave it until tonight, which is about 10 hours from now, um, and then see how it is. I may even demold it tomorrow uh, just to be 100% sure because uh, this is a lot of silicon I've used and I'm kind of nervous about how it turns out. The good thing is this piece I need to cast about 20 times to make the castle wall, which sounds like a lot. Uh, that was at least eight individual castings of the Hearst Arts moulds, so it saved me an enormous amount of work in having to do endless casts and then glue everything together. So this will be much easier to manage these panels on top of a polystyrene wall uh, to give me a light and easily made wall around the city. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see how this went then. Right, here I am all set up to do the uh, ground covers. So here I've got my uh, topsoil, um, which um, as I mentioned on the podcast in a recent hobby tip, you can use graded topsoil from a bag from the garden centre, which are now reopening. You can use soil out the garden or you can use soil anywhere. You can get it for free without breaking any laws. So what I've done is I've baked it in the oven um, at 100 degrees centigrade, which is just short of 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, for about 50 minutes in total, probably two shifts of 25 minutes just to make sure it's evenly um, dried out. Don't run it too hot because apparently you can actually damage the organic material in the soil and it starts to release things that make bad smells. So just warm it up to get it dry. What I'm going to do is pass it through two grades of sieve. So I've got a really uh, coarse sieve here and then a fine sieve. Um, to be lazy and quick, I will stack them like this. So this will catch the big pieces, this will catch the medium pieces, and the fine pieces will fall into this uh, cut-out cereal box. And I'll just tip everything into these pots in the three different grades and keep it to one side so that everything is set up um, for making ground covers. Right, and once it's all said and done, we get our three grades in about the proportions that we want. These are great for like fallen rocks, and you can see that there are some nice chunky bits in there. I'll probably wash this just in case there's any little clods of dirt that I need to get rid of so that it's just the rocks and chunks that are left behind. This stuff is great for like broken up branches and like the coarser material that you put down before you put your fine stuff on top. And then lastly, we've got the fine soil, which um, as you can see is super fine. And this, once you sprinkle it over the ground materials, which I'll do shortly, and uh, mix it with the PVA layers on top, sets super hard and looks really, really good for scaled dirt because you get little bits still in there and it looks super realistic because it is dirt. All right, next step is to get some ground cover down on the pieces that I have completed. So this is the old Garden of Moor sets or the Sigmarite Mausoleum, I think it's now called, uh, where you get double the amount, which is great. Um, however, this area is super flat here. This is one of the modular tiles that will be replaceable on the city section. Um, graveyards should absolutely not be flat and even, uh, especially um, with the theming of Age of Sigmar and, and or fantasy, everything needs to look really knackered. Um, so I'm going to make these plastic hard or um, EPVC areas around here uneven and kind of fill in around here to blend everything together. Because right now, obviously, it looks like multiple plastic pieces and some um, uh, leftover casting bricks that I've kind of tried to fill in the gaps where the walls are missing. And what I'm going to do is make this all super uneven. And what I'm going to do is use plaster of Paris. So this is just cheapo, regular plaster of Paris from a craft store. This is from Hobbycraft, I think. Yep. Um, and I'm just going to mix it up in a pot quite thick. So I'm not going to follow the instructions on here. I'm going to make it quite thick, like it's a solid paste rather than runny. So that I can smush it in between all the pieces here and kind of just place some dollops to make everything uneven. That way, when you go over with your gravels or earth textures or whatever, you get nice undulation and changes in the ground so it doesn't look boring. But it's also kind of flat enough that you can put miniatures on there without them falling over. So you've got to strike the balance between realism 
um, and looking interesting, visually interesting, and uh, playability. So that's why there's a little chapel that goes here, but everything else is going to remain kind of open so that models can move in and out. And again, that's why there's not walls all the way around. So I made a nice thick mix of the plaster of Paris and used the uh, lollipop stick to make sure I spread it evenly around and got it all over the edges as well to give it a nice finish. Okay, so I got it all covered. It started to sort of semi-set now. So what you can do is put a tiny bit of water on your finger. And now I will just start sort of moving it around so that it's not too even, but also isn't mega lumpy. So just make some little like hills and things like that. Um, maybe you can mark a pathway out if you want to have it look like people walk around here. You can just smooth that in. It won't be super obvious once you get all the ground covers on there, but it just makes a nice bit of unevenness and kind of gives you a base shape to vary your land up a bit so that it's not super flat. Also, you can use a little bit of water on your finger. It's just some old paint water. Get some spots like here where I got it on the wrong place when I was being a little bit messy. Um, just put the water on there to turn it into a wash, basically and then it'll largely just add a little bit of texture to the base. If you really want it off there altogether, you could soak it away with a paintbrush or something dipped in some water. But it's really easy to clean up, and then I'll leave this to set. It'll be about 15, 20 minutes to set, firm enough that I can then move the piece around. I'll sand off these edges here. And the best thing about this is, unlike PVA, etc., it doesn't set via drying. Um, it sets via chemical reaction, so there's no change in its shape. Um, so it won't pull. If this was PVA and it sort of shrunk, it would bow the edges of the board piece, but this will stay nice and flat as it cures. Right, the last hobby goal that I hope to achieve this weekend and get in the video was the finishing up of the canal piece. So I've got all of these segments, and I've got some more across the back here drying, and um, that I've glued to this chipboard so that it's nice and sturdy and easy to move around. I'm going to give these a coat of the same base layer that I'm doing on all of my um, flat plaster pieces, and that is to coat them in a mixture of glue and paint to partially prime them, um, but mainly to toughen them up. Although these pieces won't get models actually placed on them because they're under the side here, I want everything sealed and, and set because there's going to be resin poured in here and I don't want any leakages at all. So the stage one of sealing everything will be the glue and paint layer. Then I will spray paint them once all of that's dry to make sure it's very flat black and get to the painting part. Right, so the mix is a nice cheap acrylic black here. Um, this glue, this is wood glue. I mean, you get a litre of it is reasonably priced. Um, it sets incredibly hard. A nice little mixing pot, a brush and a water, and I'll just get the proportions about one quarter glue, one quarter paint, and then the other half water, roughly speaking. See how it looks. If it's a little thick, I will put a little bit more water in because the idea is that this is thin and soaks in and protects everything without obscuring any of the detail. So put all the ingredients in a little glass jar and mix them up. You can see as I'm doing this, I'm being a bit messy. And then after the first coat, it's a little thin. So I just added a bit more paint and glue. Right, so I wanted to think about a way of doing this quickly and easily. So what I've done is I've just dry brushed the entire piece in the several layers of grey that I used in the last vlog. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it with a contrast paint or an ink would work as well to tint the wood brown. So that's an easiest way of getting everything highlighted and then pick out the wood so that it looks a bit different. So if you don't have one of these um, stands for your Citadel paints, uh, they are amazing. And what I'm going to do is very quickly just go over the wood with a very thin layer of this. And the colour is so strong in the um, contrast paint that it will tint the wood brown but leave the highlights in place and I may go over very carefully with like a very light beige dry brush. I'm going to let this dry and see how it comes out but you can see it's tinted the wood really nicely and you're going to get a nice difference between the stone and the woodwork. Well, the layer of gore grunter fur has dried and actually I'm really happy with it is. I would probably do a dry brush if this was on a building or something but these are going to be on those uh, canal pieces that are under the lip of the other pieces and going to have some water effects poured in there I don't really want it to look too flashy and um, so I'm really happy with that kind of wet weather worn wood look that it's come out with so hopefully next week um, I will be able to get the top of the um, dock area done and be able to get these installed and work on building the actual wooden dock area where I can have a stand a few miniatures.